I don't know about you, but for me, this month's Torah chat points, it was easy for us, for me to see Yeshua, at least in the life of Joseph. Now, we can say that now because we see Yeshua's Jesus life story in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. Um, so we able to make that comparison and to see how it's related. So um, it's good that we have the New Testament. Um, but you know, I don't believe the patriarchs or the prophets even thought about their lives as being as an example of showing um, the Messiah to come. Welcome back to Torah Chat Points. My name is Patrice Robinson with the Reconcile with the Kingdom where we become an in harmony of the whole word of truth. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment, share, like this video as a way of showing your support. Now we go on through the significant events of chapters 46 through 48 of Genesis. Here we go. Genesis 46. Here we have the descendants of Jacob, Israel, moving to Egypt. There were 66 individuals that moved from Canaan to Goshen, but a total of 70, because that includes Joseph and his family. Jacob meets up with Joseph, and that was a memorable moment of meeting his son, who he thought was dead all these years but it turns um, out that um, he becomes the governor of Egypt the end of this chapter provides some information why the Egyptians feel that the Hebrews are an abomination to them why he why they can't sit and eat with them because the Hebrews were shepherds so it was like an unclean thing for the Egyptians chapter 47 Pharaoh meets Joseph's family and Jacob, um, which is Israel, was about 130 years old then. Jacob blesses Pharaoh in this chapter and Pharaoh gives Joseph's family the best of the land in the land of Ramsey. Joseph continues to negotiate with the people for the grain. And if, like I said last week, if they didn't have the money, they, he would take the cattle for grain. And if they didn't have the cattle or the money, um, he would exchange it for land. You know, you give me your lands, the land becomes feral. So believe me, he most definitely was a blessing to Egypt growth uh, and the richness of Egypt because they was, Pharaoh was getting more land and more cattle which uh, the children of Israel managed those um, herds. So, because, you know, this, this is important to know um, when they came in and how many souls because you know what happens in, uh, in Exodus. Um, so, Jacob lived in Egypt for just about 17 years and he lived to be like 147 years old. I'm sorry, Jacob, if I said Joseph, forgive me. Um, so Jacob made Joseph promise him that he will bury him um, in the, not in Egypt, but take him back to his father's land. Chapter 48. Joseph received the report that his father is ill, so he brought in his sons to see his father. Jacob um, has raised Joseph's son, Jacob, which is Israel, has raised Joseph's son from grandchildren to sonship. Joseph brought his children to Jacob's bedside to receive their blessings with Ephraim on the left and Manasseh on the right. Um, but Jacob crossed his arms and laid the right on Ephraim and the left on Manasseh. Joseph tried to switch them back, but Jacob assured him he knew what he was doing. He was um, bringing Manasseh uh, from the firstborn to Ephraim to be the firstborn. And this is kind of what happened to Esau and Jacob. Um, the focus now is about 
Jehovah's timing. So when I, as I was reading um, the story of Joseph, and it's constantly about timing, what's going on. It's, it's all about that timing. The, the entire time, at least started from chapter 42, um, Joseph has a dream. You know, his dreams in chapter 37, he know he had the dream about the sun and the moon, the loving stars and the shafts bound down to him. And if you notice the brothers understood that dream. I know people talk about how Joseph was able to interpret dreams, but we forgot, we, we forget not only did he was able to interpret dreams, the brothers clearly knew what these dreams meant. They didn't realize it was coming from Jehovah, but they most definitely understood what their dream was. Not only the brothers, but Joseph, uh, but Jacob also knew what those dreams meant. The dream of greatness was disturbing the, um, their brother because it was making uh, it was making Joseph above them, and he of course he's younger, so it was making him above not only the brothers but his mother um, and his father. Now, because they didn't have the vision of possibility, and remember jo Joseph already had so much favor from his father and that favor continued on i thought it was challenging in the household but that favor continued on uh, so it may have been disappointing and difficult for joseph for him to see how his dream was going to come to pass because he was uh, first he was sold by his brothers and then he he was lied on by the master's wife and then he ended up in prison so he probably um and the bible doesn't say that but he had to keep his mind on jehovah and so he was blessed um uh, with organization skills he was blessed with administration skills he was blessed as a leader um that um that leadership and that favor just continue on. I mean, to be a master of the, the master, to be the leader of the master's house and then to be um, head person over the prisoners and instead of the warden and the warden don't even bother you. He leaves you alone and let you manage things and, and don't micromanage or check on you. So that was some highly, highly favor that he was receiving. This should give people encouragement. His story alone gives us encouragement for things that Jehovah has shared with you for us with through dreams or things that he has shared with us and put in our spirit and how we wait for these things because it still has to be according to Jehovah's timing. Now our timing when some of these things come to pass is still with Jehovah's timing because remember when Joseph had these dreams, it didn't give him the timing. He didn't say, the dream didn't say that you're going to be all of this by this year, this time. He just was seeing the dreams that he was ahead. He was in leadership. He was above his family. It didn't give him the timing, but it did show him that this was going to happen. So his dream of greatness ended up saving the very ones the very ones that turned against him. So I also wanted to touch a little bit about um, Jacob adding Joseph's sons to sonship. Now, this is not the first time we see this. Remember, Noah did the same thing with Canaan, which was Ham's son, Noah's grandson. So raising the children up to sonship is not new. It's first mentioned with Noah and Canaan, and now we see it again with Israel, with Ephraim and Manasseh. As always, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jehovah, which is his word. Um, so in the volume of the book, we will find Yeshua. Next week reading will be actually Genesis 49 through 50, so we'll be finishing up um, Genesis 
and I'm looking forward to moving forward from Genesis to Exodus with us, with you guys. Um, so I will see you on Saturday at 10 o'clock p.m. for the Sabbath day discussion, and I will see you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. for Torah Chat Points. Thank you.